it kind of helped him advance. I mean, do you think this is a conspiracy? You gotta go with Jacob Butter. You gotta go lefty. <laughs> no, we're talking, about, we're talking about the players. That's tournament champion right. to the podcast. There he is right there. Oh, he doesn't even know how to watch. Go to YouTube.com and search <laughs> Down Lane Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Down Lane Podcast. We are streaming live from the lab at Town & Country Lanes. I'm your host, Kyle Haynes, and with me is the assistant to the host, Anthony Scacia. Welcome. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, don't forget to sign up for alerts. Um, share with your friends. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and email us at downlaidpod at gmail.com. Downlaidpod at gmail.com. Um, and uh, comment to us during the show. We'd love to take questions and chat with you guys during the show. Um, and on today's episode, we'll be touching on some local tournament action like we usually do. We like to uh, talk about what's going on in our area, um, maybe a little bit about uh, our successes and failures. Um, the uh, World Series of Bowling this week, which uh, just finished up. Uh, and then uh, this week's topic of discussion, uh, which is uh, how to pick a bowling ball, which is uh, or pick a bowling ball for, for what you're about to face on the lanes um so yeah how was your week this weekend it was all right just all right yeah you know thanks for laughing at me austin i don't know <laughs> it was all right you know what i'm saying how's your week kyle i don't know it's all right i mean i kind of stunk up the lanes a little bit last week in in league but um so did i, I went two-handed everybody by the way i went two-handed <laughs> for one game uh you know, so I went two and I shot two oh one after my one eighty start. Proud of myself. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, around the area, we got we got a busy weekend coming up this week for tournaments in the Albany area, um, especially here. You've got the Invitational, which is a sixty four man bracket. Um, seated. Seated bracket. Seated bracket. Yeah. yeah. Qualifying out of league and in league, and then at uh, the top. 57 scores go to the finals day with the champions of the previous uh, tournaments, which was another seven people. Uh, so 57 top seven, top 57 made it. So the cut was 720 something this year. And uh, yeah, they all come in for seated match play. There is no other qualifying. It's all head to head the rest of the time. Yeah, biggest, so yeah, biggest qualifying tournament. wrapped up last weekend. Or qualifying. did they have in league this week too? No, no, it was all, all done on Sunday. Wrapped up last Sunday. Right. Um, yeah. So first place, this is our big one. It's actually I think first place the past few years has been twelve hundred. So this one is probably gonna be around the same, if not a little bit more. We probably have close to the record number during coronavirus here, record number yeah. of entries. Nice. Without re entries. So we'll see what the prize fund looks like. Yeah, and um the the I might have missed it. Did you touch on how you get in other than the open qualifying? You have yeah, in league and then there's winners league. from previous tournaments and whatnot. Right. So you can bowl in your league for three weeks and you take your highest score there. It's handicapped as well, 90% of 230. And then if you don't bowl here at Sound Country Lanes, where the lab is located, uh, you can come in out of league qualifying or guys who bowl in league can also come for the out of league qualifying. Um, we have three squads, one on Saturday and we have the other two Sundays. So Saturday, Sunday, um, the second week. Or you can be a winner of one of... You don't have to be a winner. You just have to bowl good. Oh, no, no, no. You can be a winner of one of the few tournaments throughout the yeah, year. Yeah, we like had seven... Bakers. We had six... Five tournaments previous to this. All the winners got in, and then we had a, the Bakers doubles. The two guys got in. Um, but two guys aren't going to be here, so it kind of made the cut a little bit uh, lower, which was nice. Made it like 721 or so. But yeah, big tournament. Yeah, it's going to be, it's a long day too. If you are able to make it past the loser's bracket or through the loser's bracket, or if you make it far through the winner's bracket, it is a long day of bowling um, to keep winning and winning and winning. And it's just uh, long. Stephanie, my wife, she uh, second place for yeah, the finals her first year, which was a few years ago. Yeah. It was a long day. It is um, a long day, but you know, good. it's fun. It is fun. something it's that fun no one else has. Yeah, nobody else can. Uh, they have. They've tried to replicate it a few times, but I don't think it's really stuck anywhere else. Yeah, so, uh, and then uh, in Schenectady at Boulevard Bowl, they have the Blizzard Bowl going on. Um, they have a almost uh, sixty entries so far, which is a team event. Um, four man teams. Four man teams. I believe they upped it to uh, twenty five dollars a person this year, and then that's also to benefit the Boys and Girls Club of Schenectady. Uh, that tournament was started by. 
my grandfather and uh can't remember his name. <laughs> Frank DePalma. Oh, Frank. Okay, I was going to say Frank Excuse DePalma, me. but yeah. Yeah. Former pro shop uh, operator uh, at Boulevard Bowl. Yeah, right. Yep. yep. Big tournament for them every year. Yeah. Um, and then at Town Academy, you guys just bowled this past weekend in the over-under 50 tournament. We did. Did pretty good. You made the cut. Yeah, we let our squad. finals or uh, the semifinals. semifinals. Yeah, yep. we, we had it in hand, and I decided to, you know, kind of give it to them. I missed two spares. Easy spares. We, you know. we were going to change the topics from t- change the topic of discussion today from uh, how to pick a bowling ball to how to make your spares based on <laughs> Anthony needing to learn how to make spares. But no, I was good. I literally <laughs> missed. Thank you for laughing at me, everybody. Um, we tell everybody to make spares. I missed the first seven pin I shot at the day, and I switched thumbs in my spare ball. Remember we talked about interchangeable thumbs. I switched my thumb because the other one felt funny. I didn't miss one the rest of the way, and I get into that game, and I clipped one off my ankle to miss a six pin, and then I chopped a two four seven. I took the four seven. And uh, we actually lost by six pins that match. And I threw, that was like 10 frames. I think I had eight strikes for 233. So we win handily if I don't do stupid things. Hey, Make your spares, kids. Make right. them. <laughs> Make your spares. It's very important. And then uh, do you, who, who ended up winning that, uh, that tournament? Um, Scott Rogers and Jess Aiza. Two other lefties. Uh, okay. they, won, they won. They beat Ryan Schaefer and uh, Steve Wagner. Okay. So a couple of big names, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Steve Wagner's a, a big name around here. And then uh, Ryan Schaefer is just this kind of decently known guy in the bowling yeah. world, you know? <laughs> I mean, he does pretty well everywhere he goes. He's pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we bowled with him. Good guy. Never really, uh, never said anything mean to me or anything. So, <laughs> you know, I like him. I think most bowlers are pretty good guys. Um, and then the Donato scratch singles are this weekend. The, the finals are. They've yeah. been qualifying for the last few weeks. Um, and last quali- year. Uh, yep. And then uh, the qualifier is uh, there's a, not the three more qualifiers left one on Saturday afternoon, two on Sunday morning, and then the finals are Sunday afternoon. That's, I think, over $3,000 to win. I think it's like 3200 to win. Yeah, usually. Uh, yeah. On top. That's what they advertise. Yep. 3200 That's the biggest scratch tournament in the area. Yeah, I think so. Uh, for singles. And ours is the biggest handicapped singles event in the area yeah. from what I know of. Um, so two of the biggest tournaments for both sides of the, uh, spectrum here this weekend. It's pretty yep. cool. Yeah. A few years ago, Kyle Troop and uh, a couple of other guys decided to swing by and mop up, yeah. uh, that tournament of when the nationals was in Syracuse. I remember that. Yeah. I asked <laughs> Kyle Troop how long it took him to, uh, pick out his Afro and everyone thought I was nuts, but it's super good guy. He was like, ah, I just do it after I get out of the shower. <laughs> yeah, good guy. Good guy. Kyle Troop. Nice. So uh, the World Series of Bowling uh, wrapped up this week. Um, again, a super intense uh, week of bowling for those guys. Uh, Tom Doherty won his first major. Um, and The Rebel. The Rebel? That's so, what he, is that what they're sure. calling him now? Pretty sure that's what he is. Or He's you just rebel. say he is. Pretty sure he calls himself the Rebel. Okay. It's the first I've heard of it. Maybe I'm not in the loop. Obviously not. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so he won his first major and really this week and the last few weeks of the, of the year have been his kind of his showcase year. Um, because he hasn't really, I don't want to say he hasn't done much. He's obviously been on tour for a long time, um, and been around here or there, but he's really starting to kind of take fire. Yeah, exactly. You know, last night it looked like he threw a radical Intel. For those of you who don't know, we're going to talk about bone balls. But, yeah, that is actually like a three-year-old piece. Um, and I know he was talking about he was throwing some of the older equipment recently because they're just matching up the the new uh, animal patterns or the modified animal mm-hmm. patterns really well. So he's actually throwing some old stuff, but he's crushing it. You know, one uh, what was it? Won the championship, the world championship, and then he won the scorpion last night. Yeah. Scorpion, yeah. Yeah, when, uh, when we were watching last night um, – I was pretty impressed because it looked like I don't know if you watched the whole show last night, but I, I was watching the whole show last night, and the four guys or three, what do they start with? Four or five? I can't remember. But he was the only one that like could strike right off the bat and couldn't miss. The other guys really had to fight for a line. Um, Tang, he chose the urethane, and I think that was just the wrong move. Was it Michael? It was. Yeah. It was not vitamin D. Ooh, excuse me, everybody. Yeah, I like Michael's Tang's game. I like his game a lot. Surprising, he chose urethane. Yeah, but and 
but he didn't move for 10 frames. And I think it was just a poor judgment call on his part. He, he could see people using reactive and striking. and He should have just made the adjustment, in my opinion, my non-professional opinion. Yeah, non-professional but- keyword. Uh, <laughs> but he's actually, it's interesting because his brother gets into the same trouble that he gets into. His brother's big into urethane. Um, and it's interesting because when he goes on shows, I actually listened to him on YouTube. And he talks about, man, I was in urethane too long. I was in urethane too long, and I didn't do the right move. And then uh, it seems like his brother did the exact same thing. Yeah. I think he would learned from his brother. <laughs> I guess he didn't. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, it, I was just surprised to see that. I mean, at least five frames, you would think he would have seen something that those guys are. I mean, like I said, Doherty was, was striking uh, the whole time. Um, the rebel. The rebel, Yeah. But uh, yeah, we got a we got a clip here of uh, Gordy just mashing. Needs nine. This is win. Win. Right wow. I gotta tell you, when he threw that down the screen, he Matt, it was like, I was like, yeah. This is my house. This is he actually bowled at this place, right? Yeah. Uh, two of them. Good. Like, 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 yeah. like, hey, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have a really good chance at winning. Yeah. Um, this should be your time to shine. He's actually, he's doing it. You know, it's yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, you're bullying your home alley. You know, you got that lot of high expectations. Um, so good for him. They good were talking him. about that last night. Like, uh, um, how, if the crowd was there, would he have done as well? You mm. know what I mean? Like w- if the pressure was on as much, I'm not saying that there wasn't pressure, but if the but pressure was on as much, it's a different atmosphere, yeah. you know, cause I've heard fishermen very interesting. <laughs> uh, there's a guy, uh, Jake Wheeler, he fishes in the, the national event and he was the, like one of the biggest events of the year was on his home Lake where he lives like five minutes away from. And he actually like took his wrap off his boat where the sponsors are. They're on wraps. Like they have, so people know who they are. Uh, he took his wrap off because he didn't want all the locals flocking to him because he's like, there's just too much pressure riding on this. So interesting because the locals can follow him. This year, uh, the Rebel uh, <laughs> doesn't doesn't have to have fans there. So does it change it? I don't know. Yeah. I think I would love to have fans there and get fired up, man. As long as it was like Portland and not like the other tournaments where yeah, it's no. super stuffy and quiet. I would try to get everybody fired up. Like, yeah. you know, this is, you know, you're going to say this is my house and people are there. They're going to get fired up yeah. you're gonna feed off that he did wait till the end though he wasn't he wasn't being yeah. cocky until the end he, yeah you couldn't do that he was a quiet dude the whole time and then right, right in the last shot he knew he pured it and he just he let it out which was pretty sweet another no thumb bowler yeah at least he's one-handed okay. <laughs> um and then the rest of the week you had uh sam cooley he won his first title um oh, sh- from down under. Yeah. Oh, good eye, Mike. <laughs> He's from Australia. He uh yeah, he won the cheetah. He won yep, the cheetah. Exactly. Throwing a yep. Zen. Uh little uh controversy on that one too, because Axiom. Chris... One of the two, Axiom or Zen. They look uh, the same. I, I don't know. Uh, it, was Probably it what both. color was it? Purple? <laughs> it was both. I'm pretty sure. He used both of them sometime. Um, but Chris Prather fouled, which you don't see a lot of. Did he is... really foul? I think he fouled. Well, you know what? I don't think he fouled. I think that's a bunch of that's a horse that's horse crap. You think so? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I know so. There's a difference between thinking and knowing, and I know that that wasn't a foul. Why? why how can you be so sure? Because pull the picture up. I will. I just got to find it. See? Look, he doesn't know. <laughs> you know he's nervous about it now because I have a different opinion on him. He's nervous that I'm going to prove him wrong here, and everybody's going to see it. I don't even. What, what are you even saying? I don't know. I'm talking smack, buddy. You're going to have to fill time now because I, now i got to find it. All right. Well, anyways, uh, Sean Maldonado also won. He won the chameleon pattern. Two-hander. Uh, doesn't have great balance at the line. He's a hammer staffer. Uh, congratulations. It was his first PBA title as well. Um, he bowled really well. Uh, did you see that match, Kyle? I did not. Okay. Well, he bowled great. He he has that little weird hop in there uh, at the end, of his, uh, yep. the end of his approach. But he's actually had a lot of – I've seen him on TV a few times. It seems like he always bowls pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had the scorpion last night, which the rebel, the rebel one as well. And, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Weber, Pete Weber, PDW, who do you think you are? I am, uh, is retiring from the, from the national stops. He's still going to do some regionals and the PBA 50. Um, he was on air last night. If you didn't watch, okay, there's the foul. If you didn't watch PDW, it was great. He's a, he's a good guy. The dire hop. Serious. Dropping serious, serious language 
on t- on national yeah, television last night. Can't really night. do that. Uh, FCC regulated on the show, so <laughs> not going to do anything crazy. I mean, it doesn't look like a foul to me, Kyle. The, the shoe blends into the foul line. Did the foul line go off, or was you it? You literally line? just said it. The shoe blends into the foul line. Yeah, so he didn't foul. It's a foul. It's no, absolutely not. Black on black, you can't see the difference. What did the line judge say? Did the line judge call it a foul? I don't remember who it was. That's not a foul, Kyle. That's a foul. Okay. Then you can't see any approach between his shoe and the foul line. Okay. It's a foul. It's not a foul. a foul. There's no there's no clear evidence. In football, you don't overturn something. There's no clear <laughs> evidence. There's no clear cut evidence there. You can't even tell what that picture is. I can tell you it's a foul. I'm it's telling you right now. Foul. Foul. Well, he's not over. He crossed the foul. No, he didn't. He breached the black part of the line. It is a foul. No. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, he uh he didn't throw a spare after that. He threw eight. So it got in his head possibly. And I don't Definitely. I think he got eliminated that round. Possibly can't really remember exactly, um, but you know we we go back to PDW. He retired, yeah, and so did Walter Ray Williams Jr. Which one's better? I mean, if you want to go strictly by stats and wins, Walter Ray Williams is the greatest player of all time. Yeah, he actually won his hundred. He won his hundred fifteenth PPA title. Uh, that that includes regionals, fifties, nationals. Right. So everybody knows he won his hundred fifteenth this uh, last weekend or this weekend. Um, out in North Carolina, Fayetteville, was it? I thought that's what it said, but he won his 115th. That's a lot of titles. Regardless, he is the greatest bowler of all time. Next to me. I mean, simple. I didn't see my name on the thing we were doing later on the lefty side. Nope, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, the uh, two of the some of the greatest bowlers, they, they so they're they're gonna bowl in a you know occasional national stops, but uh, uh, They've retired from the national stops. They'll be bowling in PBA 50 events um, and maybe occasional uh, regular national stops. All right. So let's get right into why we're here. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, the the things that matter, things that we're here to help you with. The technical side of things, a little more technical talk. A little more technical talk. And uh, so we're going to talk about why it matters. And we're going to talk about how to pick your ball. And why it matters. Why, 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 why? For it. I love that. That just gets me so excited. You know? Did you add a strike effect in there? That was already there last time. You just didn't hear it. I don't pay attention much. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love you gotta love the effects. That's all that's what yeah, it's that's about. good. Why it matters. Here we go. Early Anthony will always be the greatest. Mitch Young, wow. Yeah. Um, here we go. So we're gonna talk about bone balls. Uh who are you gonna dive in or you want me to dive well, in? I it's mean, a rabbit hole. It, you you can you can just keep going and going. It, all topics are rabbit holes, really. But I mean, first of all, we can tell you how to how to pick your ball out of your bag, which ball you, which ball you should pick out of your bag for what shot and whatnot. But first and foremost, you need to know your equipment, and in order to do that, you need to get out on the lanes and you need to practice. Plain and simple. So if you don't know what your bowling ball does, and if you don't know what bowling balls you have, all of this talk is completely irrelevant. So you need you need to take what we say and apply it to the lanes before you even get to league bowling or tournament bowling, etc. You need to get out on the lanes and practice. So like, what do you do to are practice? We, what do you do to prepare? Are we talking about practice? We're talking a little bit about practice to teach people to, to recognize what their bowling balls do and how to choose which ones to use. What do I, how do I practice? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's tough specifically for me. to learn about your bowling ball. Let's go. Okay, about that. if I'm gonna talk about my bowling balls, uh, you know, so first off, I take uh, you know the two. I, if I get a new one, are we talking, or just to see the differences in general? Yeah, I mean, well, you're a little bit more advanced than most uh, average players, so yeah, you're gonna be taking a new ball to learn what it does. Okay. But if somebody is going to learn about their ball and see what it does on the lane, what should they do? All right. Well, normally, what I would do is I would warm up get my shoes on, go down there, throw a few shots Thanks. with the old ball. <laughs> Got to start from the beginning. And uh, after you get warmed up, I would probably line up with your previous ball mm-hmm. or the other ball or whatever it is. Um, staple, and, something that you sure. like a lot. Whatever you know you're what from. It does. Yeah. yeah, say you're going, you're getting your second ball. You throw the one you've got first. Um, you kind of line up with that. You're not lined up if you don't throw a double. Remember that. Uh, so make sure you throw a double in there. And after you throw the double, you're going to, however, when you're warmed up, you're going to grab the other ball. Um, and you're going to, what I do is I stand in the exact same spot and I'm going to throw it to the exact same spot two or three times and I'm just going to see how it reacts. And then I'm going to compare it from there. So typically if one ball, if I'm lined up with, uh, the ball to my right, which is a track strata 
and then I go to a track latitude. Uh, we'll get into the different weight blocks and everything. Um, but you know, those are two different balls and the, the latitude hooks less. Then I'm going to know that that's more than likely a weaker bowling ball than the other ball I previously thrown. I'm probably got to move a little bit right with it or, you know, depending on the condition as well, uh, cause the bowling balls are different surface and everything, but it's going to give you a good gauge on wow, this one hooks more, this one hooks less. And then you can kind of line up from there. And then once I usually see what the ball does, I reline up with the new ball and then I go back to the old ball and I try to throw the same line to see, is there anything different about it? Um, so, you know, I try to stay in the same location and then for me, I bowl on a lot of sport shots. So for me, I kind of just use them on the sport shot. And but see that, how that doesn't really matter as far as the person learning what their bowling ball does. They can still see where the ball hooks and remember if you guys tuned into previous episodes, it's not about how much left to right or right to left for hooking. It's about where your We're ball hooks. trying That's to control front to back versus left to right, right. or right to left right. Um, for you righties out there. Right. So we're, we're looking for where the ball starts to transition and we're looking to see where it starts to either, pick up, right. Lose its energy or starts to starts to turn, et cetera. Right. Yes. There's never too many bowling balls, by the way, you can get as many as you want. <laughs> people need to know when they're listening that you're responding to people. I'm responding. Comments. Sorry. Mar Marcy Chadwick uh, is uh, uh, commenting that Joe DeVellis has too many bowling balls, which is, I, I agree. She's right. I mean, there's never too many. He doesn't, there's, she, he, he has too many because he doesn't even know what they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> there's never too many. I'm just kidding. All right. So, you, you, you learn what your bowling balls do and then um, in practice, so you know that, you know, you've got one that, uh, you know, rolls kind of early, one rolls later. Um, one and, that's more down lane skid flip motion. Right, right, one's right. more arky and then the other one's really early and really strong, picks up the friction very early. So like right. three stages. Yeah. You know. So what you're saying is maybe you should have uh, kind of those – three in your arsenal if you're like a basic league bowler for a league bowler if you're going to get three bowling balls i would probably pick number one a spare ball um i have guys who come in and they get one ball um and they're like i need one ball and i can shoot tens at it eh, you can, probably can but you know the bowling balls now are designed for hook so i don't typically like to see my league guys throw it with a with a you know high-end piece of equipment because they also absorb oil and they die off so that's like another thing about it. Um, but the spare ball makes it easier. It's a little more effortless. I feel like when I use a spare ball, I don't have to try so hard to kill it or throw it harder. I can throw the same speed and just kind of feather it down the lane and make it. Um, that's your number one ball. Everybody's ball. It doesn't matter if you're a tournament bowler, a professional bowler, uh, a, a new to bowling, entry level. Your spare ball is probably your number one ball in your bag because that's going to keep you out of trouble. And like we said, make spares, you win matches. I miss spares lose matches <laughs> so make your spares get us good spare ball and then you're probably gonna get some that hooks more um for when the lanes are oily or they're playing a little bit different than normal you're probably gonna get some that hooks a ton a brunswick zenith a track strata um stuff like that which are asymmetrical pieces we'll get into that um those are like your big boy bowling balls strongest ones you can get uh and then you know for a third ball i'd go with something that doesn't hook as much uh, for it depends on your preference too on how you like to see the lane like we talked about yep that's a zenith pearl i use that on the house shot all the time because i don't like to use the solid stuff on the house shot uh, but i would get something like a zenith solid if you don't have a lot of rotation on the ball uh, if you throw it pretty strong you could probably get away with this one here uh, and then probably my second option would be or my third option would be a hero solid or a melee jab uh, the purple one that's my one of my personal favorites for the house shot is the hero solid there uh, it's just smooth. I like solid bowling balls and it's not super strong. And then my melee jab, that's a special edition one. It's the same thing as the blood red, which is also on the market right now. Uh, the blood red is just a red color. That ball gives me the most down lane motion. So those are probably, you know, meaning skid flip, skid flip. Yes. Uh, you know, those are probably three. You could get a, you know, those were four bowling balls there. You could pick one of the Zenus and a hero, or a melee jab, and those can probably get you through 95 to 96% of your league night bowling. Um, if you get four bowling balls, I'd probably do a hero, a melee jab, and one of the Zenus. So, and a spare ball. Just because it kind of gives you an array of an arsenal there. The other, the, the melee and the hero are symmetrical pieces, which are weaker. 
uh, the asymmetricals are stronger just because of their, I guess it's all physics. The asymmetrics, you're able to uh, tweak more. You can make them hook earlier, you can make them hook later. You can make them, uh, little, you know, with those. That's an asymmetric core. Somehow, there's an X, Y, and Z axis. So the Z axis on this is probably elongated somewhere to where it makes it asymmetrical. And that's also the Zenus core. That's their, that's Brunswick's strongest bowling ball out right now. Um, and that is a symmetrical piece. That is the Deviate Verge. Um, I don't know if that's the damn good Verge or the Verge. They're, the They're not the same. They're because it's the X centimeters off here. The Z axis is go. different. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Look, they're the same. That's the wider. That's a longer one. Actually, the original Verge has a longer <laughs> z-axis, giving it more differential, and the other one has a shorter, a yeah. smaller one, giving it uh, less differential. Yeah. See, difference. <laughs> so, those are probably something I would pick. Um, another thing that can influence your your decision making is, you know, the cover stocks on a bowling ball as well, as well as the core. Like for example, the original Verge. Uh, by Deviate was probably one of my favorite bowling balls. There it is. I still have two of those, I think, in my basement ready to be drilled. Um, I just love the way it rolls for me. It always rolled really good. Uh, and then they came out with, which is, that's your big symmetric bowling ball, your big sanded one. You know, their lanes are oily and you don't really need a Zenith or a Strata. That one's the one to go to. Um, and then they came out with the Verge Pearl, which was black and blue. Uh, there it is there. That one is the pearl cover stock. So like we talked about before with solid and pearls, the solids are going to hook a little earlier in the front part of the lane, and that pearl is going to give you uh, less friction, so more skid flip uh, longer down the lane and flipping in a little bit harder to the left for the righties. Uh, I prefer the Verge Pearl on the house shot just because it gives me more length, and I do sand all my pearl stuff down anyways um, just because I don't like the big skid flip motions. still gives me a little bit of length but not too flippy. And then the third one in the series was the damn good Verge. Um, and yes, I bought all three of these. <laughs> and I bought two at a time because they were so good for me. So I really like the the cores in them. They're all very similar. The damn good Verge is a little bit different. It's more for a little bit less hook, fresh fresh uh, oil. You know, the tour players look for this type of emotion, which is why this ball was made. And then the other two, the Verge Solid and the Verge Pearl, are going to give you more overall hook. I think for myself they did. Some people said this one hooked more. I didn't think they did. But the other Verges give you more hook, and the Solid will give you very similar motion to the damn good, except it'll be, I think it's a little bit later for me, a little earlier. It's somewhere, it's very close, but it just gives me more boards of hook, and then the Pearl one gives me more flip down lane. Um, I don't really use the Pearl as much anymore, though. But it depends on your eye. There's three different there's three different cover stocks out there, and they're all the same. Yeah. So you know, like we are. So if if we went by cover stock, let's say, um, how would a bowler go about choosing? Basically, like, all right, let's say we have a really uh, low surface ball, um, like a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Um, when should we use that? Like uh, low revs, high volume of oil. Uh, it depends. Cetera, right? Yeah. And then we have a polished ball, mm -hmm. maybe higher rev player or a. You're talking about house shot? Yeah, I guess that's probably most when people will right see, uh, mo you know, most when people are playing. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's start so, there. So it depends on your lane surface one. I know that's getting even farther into the rabbit hole, but for like here, we have half synthetic, half wood. Right. So we have more friction than other centers do. Um, if you have Brunswick Pro Lane, uh, that actually has the least. Uh, you know, friction to it. Those are the slickest lanes. And then AMF, AMF has the HPLs and the SPLs. Uh, I can't remember which one has a little more friction to it. Um, but basically, if you're on synthetics, a lot of times you can get away with throwing sanded surfaces. Um, solid cover stocks, I guess, you know, Zenus, Damn Good Verges, Hero Solids, uh, Black Widow 2.0, Stratus. Some places that have uh, all wood surfaces too. Absolutely do. Right. I'm just talking about the synthetics. You can usually use those. If I go to a place that has all wood, um, which not as as uh, popular anymore, um, but if you go there, typically I prefer to use some of the the less surfaced things, um, pearl bowling balls, a hybrid cover stock, something that doesn't have as much teeth to it. And what we mean by teeth is surface. So if you're at a thousand, you know that's a lot of surface because wood has a lot of friction to it. I like to use something that maybe. 3,000 or 4,000 are polished, or I use a pearl ball that's lightly sanded to 2,000 by hand. Um, 
just because I don't want that really early read in the front because then your ball hits like a watermelon down lane, just like we talked about last week with ball motion. Everything ties in. Yep. So I think it depends on your surface uh, of lanes, and then you can kind of surface your bowling balls up depending if you need more hook or less hook. But just know what you're buying when you get there. Yeah. You know? it also, it I mean, it all depends on speed, rev rate. Right. Rain conditions, but I think what it all boils down to mostly is what you observe when you're bowling. So you need to make sure you know uh, how your ball is reacting down the lane. Is it picking up? Um, and if it's not, what ball do you use? Um, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean left to right. It means how is the ball hitting the pocket? And do you need to ball down? Do you need to ball up? Do you need to do whatever? Right. Do you need to slow down? Um, Etc. But if we're if we're talking about picking a bowling ball, um, if your ball needs to pick up on the lane, then you need to stand it. Yeah, you need to you need stand to it solid. Up. If right. you're if you're rev deficient or a speed, de you know, rev. I would say rev deficient. Typically, you're going to go with an asymmetric solid, um, just because you need that extra help. The asymmetrics are more. You can fine tune them a little bit better. Um, so you can drill that asymmetric or your pro shop operator can drill that asymmetric to hook earlier to help you get that ball into the hook phase faster to help give you a little bit more hook. Um, so if you are rev deficient, typically you go with a, uh, a solid sanded ball, asymmetric of some sort. If you have a pretty good physical game, like uh, I will say that you got a decent physical game, Kyle, you know, probably in the Bantam level. <laughs> but, I would agree. Uh, Kyle's, Kyle's physical game is good. You know, my physical game is good. So, you okay. know, yeah, right. It's okay. But we're, we're on the tournament level type, you know, caliber guys, not the tour, but just, you know, your run of the mill tournaments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, symmetricals, which are actually, uh, less, less versatile and less powerful as the asymmetrical bowling balls. Uh, we can get away with them more because, you know, our ball speeds are a little bit higher. We have a good amount of revs. Uh, our rev rates not super low so when you go to symmetrics if you don't have a big hand it's it's a little bit tougher uh to drill as a pro shop guy because in a way because they are more versatile like if you drill them a different way they're more versatile meaning for you to be able to control yeah. how they operate down the lane well no I, more I or less wrong they're easier for they're they're more uh foolproof to drill i should say that's better they're more foolproof like because when you drill it, the mass bias is going next to the thumb on every single ball you drill. Right. And the, the core is symmetric. So you're really not altering the core that much, which means that the ball motion is almost going to be the same for everyone you drill. So if Kyle comes in and you say, I want uh, this ball to go down the lane and, and snap hard, let's just say a random ball, uh, it, it, I'm going to find you a ball that has those characteristics, that has that, that pearl cover stock, something that's going to probably get down the lane a little easier, and then I'll just drill it, you know, it still makes a little bit of a difference, but the ball motion is going to be relatively the same all the way throughout, no matter where I put that, that pin or anything, you know, you're not going to get anything different. You can't change where the ball hooks unless you have surface. You can only change the hook. symmetric symmetrical right. ball balls. Right, correct. Right, right. When we go to asymmetrics, like we talk about, you can change where they hook on the lane. So right. when you're rev deficient um, and you need help getting that ball to hook earlier, I can make that ball hook earlier. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why they're higher priced as well, because yeah. the technology is farther into it. I like symmetrics myself. Yeah. Personally. Like you said, they're a little more easier to control on the lane too, um, as far as not being so much skid flip and uh, um, they don't have that big kick. arc, right? Right. They also use their energy twice as fast, which is why uh, rev def deficient players uh, have trouble with symmetrics sometimes because the ball starts to just hook and then it just kind of, the hook zone is so long. It just takes really long to get, get that ball to make a motion while the asymmetrics have a shorter hook zone um, because of the asymmetry. So they're able to, to flare more and then they have a stronger motion off the spot anyways. So it helps that rev deficient guy get the ball up and going. Right. Did that make sense? Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, it's, it's it, interesting it, to talk about. Well, it helps your, your handicap. If you think of it like golf, it helps your handicap players. Yeah. Um, improve their score and it helps uh but uh it can still help your your scratch bowlers um right. because you can control how you want the ball to act right um and then with your with your symmetric uh equipment um you have your very controllable um where you know what the ball is going to do every time or very predictable 
predictable. That's a better word. Predictability. As long as you know what this thing attached to your body is going to do every time. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> Which, right. Uh, it's usually not the case, but, um, but anyway, yeah. So I think the, uh, like I said, at the, at the top of this, the, the main thing is you have to practice just like anything you want to be good at. You mm -hmm. have to practice because you have to know how to read what your ball is doing. Just like we talked about with lane conditions. If you, you know, are, if the ball hits the pocket, but you don't strike ball it, motion. It, the ball motion, right. You have to be, you have to know what the ball is doing on the way to the pocket. Right. To know if you need to change the ball or if you need to move your feet or whatever. You know, so if right. it's about changing the ball, if you have an arsenal to choose from, you can then make a decision, am I gonna move my feet or am I gonna change balls? Right. And you know, your pro shop operator should help you, you know, when you go into practice, you know, when you're there and you're you're having issues or you do have a new ball or you're looking to get to a new ball, you know, you always stop in and say hi to them and say, Hey, you know, I'm looking for a new ball you know, can you, can you come watch me throw a few, you know, and you should always get your positive access point measured because that's going to tell you where your uh, where the ball like spins. Yeah, end. that's a good point. Um, not only do you want to just get fit, a part you, of your fitting should be yeah. learning all of this part about uh, how your ball rolls, right? Right. right. So you want to get your positive access point because your, your pro shop operator is able to lay a ball out um, based off where your access point is. And that's when the ball, you know, your access point is like when we put the tape on the, the, the bowling ball and it's, it didn't move right when you, when we first threw it from last week. So that's your access point. And what you're, what you can do with that is you can lay the ball out. So the ball makes uh, a motion that you're looking for and your pro shop operator can do that. But as well as that, you should also learn what your, your tilt is. Um, if the you reverie. have time, your rev rate. Yeah. Because it all, it all makes a difference when you're, when you're trying to, piece together a ball for somebody it's not like golf clubs where we can go try them say hey you know i didn't like that uh that that c9 from whatever it is uh is that a golf club i have no idea <laughs> shoes are called c9 it was the first thing that popped in my head i love those title of c9s there it is title of, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say titanium um but yeah so you should find out all that information because then when you pick a bowling ball a lot of times if you don't have the uh the demo balls you're not able to see what they're really going to do. But layouts only affect the ball 10%, but you, they can still affect, you know, get as close as you can to get the right ball in your hand and the right fit and the right layout to give you the best performance possible. Right. That's the goal for, of a pro shop operator. Because I don't want to see a guy come in here and say, this ball sucks. Right. It's like, okay, well, why does it suck? <laughs> you know what I mean? So There's still somebody that has to throw it. Yeah, you still have to throw. Line. Right, so I try to get as close as I can. So all my customers, usually if they come in, even my two-handers, and you two-handers are tough sometimes, you crazy SOBs. But, you know, it <laughs> but takes, what, makes, what makes two-handers tough to drill for? Not Tell tough us. to drill for. They're easy to drill for. I love two-handers. Five minutes and you're out the door, baby. Everybody's <laughs> two holes happy. done. Two holes done. Uh, it's just, you know, their access point is different because they roll the ball so weird. The roll, a lot of my two-handers, their roll is clips the finger holes. So it's, it's, uh, it's tough to drill for sometimes. Uh, but then you get, <laughs> you're killing me, man. Sorry. Anthony's having a moment because he doesn't like to drill for two handers. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so it's just a little bit, uh, interesting. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Anthony loves his two handers. I do love two handers. A lot of them are my friend, uh, you know, Jack, pa -pow. Pa -pow. Pa -pow. you gotta say Jack's name in there. Uh, but it's just a little bit different. Uh, you know, a lot of times it, I've, I've looked at a few acts, uh, tilts for two handers and you know, there's sometimes there's, they're usually zero. I've had a few guys at zero. So it makes it interesting. Also, uh, like where do you put the center of gravity and stuff, uh, and the mass bias? Like, where does all that go? Cause you have certain weights that you have to three ounces all the way around. Right. Uh, Matt, the center of gravity is completely irrelevant on every bowling ball that you drill. Just so you know. Well, it's used to measure or its side weight. Weights, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, but it's like irrelevant to layouts. I don't even pay attention to it. But where? So, so when they're testing side weights, if they had to, like mm -hmm. if for especially had to weigh them. Yeah, like where's their center point? Do they put a, a center point for their palm or something? Yeah, I have to put it. I have to put an X where the their their palm needs to go. But their center, okay. their grip is technically the bridge. Okay. Um, so then they would draw a center line to measure their side weight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't really know how they do it, but I'm assuming that's what they do. Yeah. You don't really have to worry about it. Cause if you hit three ounces yeah, on a bowling like ball, yeah. way off the 
yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but they have different pitches too. So I, I like drilling for two handers. Yeah, but it's a little bit different because their track is different. The ball flares a little bit differently. Um, you know, but we've got I've gotten pretty pretty good at it now. I guess <laughs> had a lot of experience with all you two handed young youngsters coming youngsters. in. But and then once you get to the tournament level too, uh, we'll we'll kind of flip pace from two handed drilling to tournament level. You should probably carry six balls, at least. Um, you know, when you're picking bowling balls, you're gonna want, like we said, a big hooking ball. You know, a big asymmetric solid because that's going to give you your most hook when the lanes are tough. And then for me, I like to go to uh, a pearl asymmetric that's uh, sanded down to two grand. And I, I actually don't get layout happy anymore. I did in the beginning and now I don't get layout happy. Everything has, I have like four or three layouts that I use. Meaning how your hand is positioned on the ball. Yeah. Itself. So where the pin goes, where the uh, center, gra the center of gravity doesn't matter where that is. Um, but where the mass bias or the pin goes exactly. in relation where the to pin and the mass bias is exactly. Yeah. Correct. 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 Um, and because like you said, it's about 10% of a difference between, uh, or effect effect on, on how the ball moves down the lane. Right. So when I have a, when I have two different bowling balls too, as well, it's easier for me to compare, uh, because right. now they have the same layout. So it's like, okay, ball X does uh, hooks really early. Uh, and it's really smooth and because it's a solid, then I go grab the pearl and it gives me another two or three feet of length. Let's just say two, it looks sure, like two or three feet. Kind of similarly. They roll similar, but it gives you a little more pop down lane yes. and it gives you that extra length. So when, when you know, if you can't use that big solid uh, asymmetric, you can go to that pearl and keep a layout that you like in there and you get a little bit better motion. So, so um, all right, we're going to uh, move on to our next part here. Uh, we're going to introduce our inaugural, 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 I can't speak English. Um, uh, our March Malarkey Bracket Showdown. I, I just decided to pick some stupid name because everybody else says March, whatever. But Malarkey? I figured what does that mean? Uh, it, it means like crazy, sort of. It's not the exact definition, but it's like goofy, kind of. Anyway, so basically uh, what we're going to do is... Uh, via Facebook and we have a link that we're going to share with everybody. Uh, we're going to put up a bracket uh, with the PBA players, um, some legends, two handers, lefties, righties. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to go to this link and then you're going to be able to vote on um, the best player to advance to the next round. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of run down the, uh, the players here um, and the bracket. Um, and basically, we broke it down into those four divisions that I told you about. Um, the legends. Did you name it Lefty Love? No, I didn't. I just did lefties. Ridiculous. I put this, this together good. with uh, the help of my buddy Charlie, Charlie Hewitt out there. Um, he gave me the idea. Um, good guy, Charlie. That's right. Um, but uh, in the uh, in the legend bracket um, division, I should call it, um, we've got it obviously in the number one spot. Walter Ray Damn, Williams. Scatia. Oh, no, nope, nope. And the reason he's in the number one spot, he's got 47 wins um, in the history, and he's the number one in history. So, guy's um, good. Give him the number one seed. Um, and he'll be facing Brian Voss, who is the number eight seed in his uh, division uh, with 25 wins. Um, then we've got uh, Mark Roth, who is the number four seed. Facing off against Dick Weber, who is the number five seed. And uh, Mark's got 34 wins. Dick's got 30 wins. Um, then we got Pete Weber facing off against Mike Albee. Who do you think you are? I am. F-bomb. <laughs> uh, Pete's got 37 wins. Mike's got 29 wins. Uh, and then we've got the great Earl Anthony. Earl Anthony's got the number two seed. And he'll be facing off Don Johnson, who is the number seven seed. And Earl's got 43 wins. And uh, Don Johnson's got 26 wins. So he's the number seven seed. Um, mm -hmm. It's a pretty stacked bracket, being that they are the legends. Um, so, yeah. We're going to move over to the lefty side. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save the lefties for last. So we're going to the two-hander side? We're going to go to the two-handers. Yeah, two-handers like... Uh... Ryan Carabin from Boulevard Bowl. <laughs> Ryan wants a shout out. I had to do it. Ryan Carabin. Yeah, pow! 
Yeah, and Jack Powell. So, Ryan, uh, Car- Ryan Carabiner. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in the number one seed, we got uh, Jason Belmonte, uh, 25 wins. Uh, he will be facing off Matt Ogle, number eight seed. Matt Ogle, he's got some good wins in there, huh? One. Yeah, good for him. Uh, <laughs> the one with Sean Rash. Um, and then uh, Kyle Troop will be facing off against Oscar Palermo. And Kyle's got seven wins. He's the number four seed. And Oscar's the number five seed. And uh, he's got five wins. And then we got uh, Anthony Simonson, uh, number three seed with seven wins against Sean Maldonado. He's got uh, two wins, and he's this number six seed. And Jesper Svensson, the number two seed with 10 wins. And he will be facing off against Chris Vaya, the number seven seed with two wins. Hmm. I was very surprised about that uh, division. I was expecting a lot more uh, titles in that division other than Belmonte. Well, I mean, he's really the only guy who consistently wins. I guess so. That's, like that's... Simon wins, but Simonson wins. But... Yeah. But I, uh, it is also a young division, like as far as the style. Belmonte's been around for a long time, obviously. But he's the guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy who's who started it all. So you're looking at Troop, probably Ogle, I'd guess. Palermo's been doing it forever, but Simo and Maldonado, Svensson, Baia are all pretty young. Yeah. I think Maldo's young. Yeah, pretty young. Yeah, he look he looks young. <laughs> Um, all right, so then we're going to move to the righty division. Um, Norm Duke, the number one seed, he's got 33 wins. You know, he could definitely be and will and is a, a legend, but uh, he hasn't announced his retirement. I don't think he'll ever announce his retirement. I think he'll probably be bowling until he can't physically move anymore. Um, he still throws 16 pounds. Does he really? Yeah, guys, is crazy. He can, throw 16. he can throw it straight. He can hook it. He can do anything he wants to the ball. He's pretty impressive. Um, uh, he's going to be bowling the number eight seed, Wes Malott, who's got 10 wins. Um, Sean Rash is the number four seed. He will be bowling, uh, Bill O'Neill, the number five seed. Sean's got, uh, where is Sean? He's got 16 wins and Billy O. I don't know if you guys knew this. Bill O'Neill was a guest on our show just a few weeks ago. I don't, I don't, did you know the viewers knew, did the the viewers know this? I think so. Oh, uh, anyway, if you guys want to take a look at that episode, you can go a few weeks back. He was a guest on the show. He's a good guy. Uh, nice guy. Good guy, Bill. Um, and uh, he had 13 wins on tour. Uh, Tommy Jones, number three seed, will be up against EJ Tackett, number six seed. Um, and uh, he's got 13 wins. Um, and Tommy has 20 wins. Uh, and then Chris Barnes, number two seed, has 19 wins against Dick Allen. The typical house bowler has 13 wins, and he's seated number seven. So they need to go to a link, you were saying? Yes, it will be posted on to Facebook and Instagram right after the show here. Um, and uh, they will be able to go to that link, and they will be able to click for the uh, – excuse me, vote for the first round, so the, the round of 32. Okay. Uh, and then – we will announce the winners of the first round and then they will then be able to vote for the round of 16 round of eight final four etc so you're telling me they need to follow us on facebook and like us on instagram or like us on facebook and follow us on instagram it's on you right now Make sure you can get these instagram twitter right we want to see who wins i think it'd be interesting right. i didn't see my name on there but i'm just assuming that i'm the square box versus champion I, I probably should have put your name on there because i had to tell you in order to get a lefty to actually fill out the lefties bracket or the lefties division. I had to go deep into the archives of the PBA um, history books here because, well, Parker Bowen, who is also a legend, uh, he's the number one seed, but he again is not retired either, but uh, he's got 35 wins. So he's the number one seed. Number two seed is Patrick Allen, who does not bowl anymore. Are you telling me that I needed to go out on tour? Sure. Sure, go on tour with your zero wins, who you would still not be able to make this bracket. Um, but Patrick Allen had to be the number two seed because he's got 13 wins. Mike Scroggins, who Anthony, by the way, at the beginning of this podcast, admitted to me, that is. I don't know who Mike Scroggins is. Obviously, he doesn't throw it as good as me. Austin can't even hold it in back there because he, he knows who Mike Scroggins is. Did we get to Mike? Did we get to Graham Fock 
Hang on a second. Okay. Mike Scroggins. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm all over the place here. So uh, I'm sorry. So the number one seed is bowling. Uh, Parker Bowen is bowling the number eight seed, Matt Sanders. Matt Sanders uh, has two wins. Okay. So then we got the number four seed, Ryan Simonelli is bowling. Jacob Butterf. I, I say that wrong, right? Butterf. 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 Uh, he's the number five seed. Ryan Simonelli, he's got eight wins, and uh, Jacob has seven wins. Um, now we get to number three seed, Mike Scroggins. Mike Scroggins has eight wins, and he is bowling the number six seed, Rhino Page. Um, of the of the last bowlers that I've just announced, only Jacob Butcher and Parker Bowen are actually bowling actively. Ryan Simonelli announces retirement. Mike Scroggins. I, I don't know where he is. He doesn't bowl. Um, I think well, Matt Sanders I guess bowls, but doesn't bowl in every tournament. Um, anyway, Rhino Page, he's bowling against. Uh, he bowls a few tournaments. I mean, then we got Patrick Allen, number two seed. He's got thirteen wins. He's bowling against Grant Pack. I love Grant Pack. And he's got he's the number seven seed. He's got four wins. I'm picking Graham. I, this is nuts. I, I can't believe that I had to get four bowlers off of the bench, I think it was, just to, just to fill out the lefties. What's wrong with your side of the lane? Well, the right side is catered to. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's just the truth. <laughs> Jeez, you guys get everything handed to you. Oh, wow. Here we lane, go. Lanes break, lanes break down. You can chase it left. The lefties, we don't got a good look. We don't have a good look. That's, That's all I had is. to hear. This is how it was last week, too. That's or two weeks ago. I'm pushing it two-handed because the lanes are all for the righties. I did not say the lanes were all for the righties. I just said I need, to I need to strike more. And two-handed, you can strike more. All right, guys. So make sure you go to our Facebook uh, Facebook page, our Instagram page. Um, and uh, it'll be on all those. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You'll be able to click the link, and then you can vote for your favorite bowler to advance or the better bowler to advance so we can fill out this bracket and see who the the champion of our march malarkey bracket showdown will be everyone's telling me the left is walled <laughs> that is ridiculous Mitch young Mitch young i and, love it and jack kapow jack kapow the left and so is the right do not get me started don't even get me started with the left the right is walled just as much as the left i love it just you guys have more bowlers, so maybe switch left-handed. I don't know. All right, so we got a few minutes here. Uh, we'll we'll start taking some some Q and A. Before we do, I do want to uh, throw a quick shout out. Anthony's cousin Nick Taconia, all the way up from Canada. His He's birthday. Not I don't care. His birthday is tomorrow. Um, so hopefully he watches because then he can have an international birthday shout out. Happy that's birthday, cool. Nick! Yeah, and Serena, they're twins, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I yeah, but for some reason, his birthday showed up on my calendar, which is weird. That's really mean of you. Yeah. That's so sexist. happy birthday, Nick and Serena. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, you were in trouble there. Who's got the? We had a few questions up, didn't we? Uh, what was the question? Well, uh, so the first question is from Mitch, and he has an RSTX. RSTX9 or X1. Uh, Protocrypt. <laughs> yeah, RSTX1 or Rubicon UC2, which I call a Rubicon ICUP. And then we've got... What's the <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a third option here. So you're a Storm Roto Grip guy, Mitch. It looks like uh, you've got a. What will it have to be? What would you be looking for? Is the first thing I would say. Um, if you're going to add to that, and you it looks like you've got a hybrid and a pearl, I'd probably. And they were both asymmetric. I would probably pick uh, an Axiom or an Axiom Pearl up, uh, just because I think those are two really good uh, symmetrical pieces done by Storm. If you do go to the Brunswick side, you're probably looking at a knockout. Uh, Brunswick knockout, but if you've got two storm balls, uh, I would say the Axiom or Axiom solid, Axiom Pearl, Axiom solid. Then my friend Charles, Charles, thanks for uh, watching tonight, Charles. Good old lefty, lefty love. He's a lefty as well. Is there a bowling ball you can buy or that you can re recommend to practice one and two handed? Well, you're going to need two bowling balls now because the rules have changed. You can't have a thumb hole if you only use two fingers. You can still practice. I mean, yeah, you can practice. But, but if you're going to bowl in a league or a tournament, sanctioned, sanctioned anything, you can't have a hole right. you're not using. Right. So if you're going to recommend anything, I'm probably just going to say get yourself a nice entry-level $100 ball because I know you haven't bowled before. And I've seen you bowl one-handed. Don't do it. Just stick with two-handed. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm throwing this one up because uh, Jeremy's got a great question. Janelle versus Jeremy. He wants my opinion. What I'm is my it. prediction? Uh, now, he is giving her pins. Why? Because he's 235 and she's 222. Yeah, but she... Uh, I'm going to say this. Sports shot, she takes him all day long. <gasps> wow. Okay. She whoops his butt on the sports shot all day long. Um, house shot's too easy. He's left-handed. And um, by the way, if for people that are watching and don't know, Janelle is Anthony's now four-year. Congratulations. They had their four-year anniversary yesterday. Four-year girlfriend I'm and boyfriend. She still talks to me. So cute. I can't believe she still talks to me. <laughs> me neither. None of us can, actually. Um, but yeah, no, I take I take Janelle every time. Wow. Uh, thinking about a phase two from Mitch Young. Yeah, that'll do just as well as the Axiom. Uh, they're very similar to Mitch Young's question there. Phase two or Axiom style, those two are very, uh, I think they're interchangeable. I think the NEX is a little bit, the NEX cover stock on that um, Axiom is a little bit stronger than, I think it's called the TX-19 on the, the phase two. Um and I think that the, the axiom is a little bit stronger as well. So whatever one you look for, those are two really good choices, though. Great choices. Who else got some questions? What do we got here? The left is walled. I can't believe you guys said that. Oh, yeah. How long does a bowling ball last with the proper cleaning? I don't know. I, I tend to – I have a hard time believing that the cleaning does a lot. I think it helps a little bit, but – I don't think it helps more, you know, I think you might get, I don't even know if a couple hundred games is, I think a couple hundred games is a lot to say it might last that long. Say 120. Yeah. I'd um, say once you get to 90, your performance deteriorates much faster than before, especially if you have a standard bowling ball. Cause when you buy bowling balls, the Kyle doesn't believe in lane shine. He thinks it's oil. I say that. No, it we have well, it's uh, anyways, it's oil that's, another, absorbing into the bowling ball. that's another conversation. Very it's simple. not, Anyways, that's another, another day's conversation. But I'd say once it gets to 90, it's it's it, it deteriorates so fast. And then if you get a sanded bone ball, you have to continually sand it every 15 games. It doesn't have to be hard sand, but you got to put surface back onto it if you want to keep it the same. So I'd say 120. And then we got Mitch. What interchangeable thumb system would I recommend? It depends on what your pro shop operator uh, likes to do. I prefer the turbos myself, but I have plenty of people who use the uh, the Vice ones with no issue, unless you're Jeremy Hook Camp. Uh, but everybody, if I usually if they have bowling balls already and they want to go, I call it backwards from fingers to thumb. I always do the Vice ones because there's no extra added pieces. the The cut is always cut to cut because the O-ring is so small. So for me, if, you're, if you've got bowling balls already that are drilled, I'd probably go with the vice ones just because it's easier for me to install them as an oper a pro shop guy. If you're going to start fresh, I'd probably just – it depends on what you want, but I would I prefer the turbo ones. That's all. I've never tried the vice ones, but the one thing I have a problem with the turbo ones, and it's also because I don't uh, – you know, drill new thumbs all of the time, but the keys get worn out really yep. fast. Um, and then and they, they loosen up really fast. Um, but that, that seems to not really happen with the vice ones. Am I right? Yeah, the vices are like, um, it's like a screw piece. So it screws right. in and it locks over a piece. It doesn't, from what I know, it doesn't wear out. I have never had anybody come and say, hey, this doesn't click unless there's something stuck in the track. That's the right. only difference. Um, I did or have just a, a little weirder. You have to like, spin them all the way around like 360 degrees right yeah but you can just it's pretty easy you can spin on your thumb and it comes right out it's not yeah. once you get used to it it's very fast i didn't like them when i first got them but there's a possibility i installed mine incorrectly because that was in my beginning days so do you think i could be as good as you in a year if i continue to pra practice two handed for my friend charles parslow anything's possible buddy i you know you're an athlete maybe but you're gonna have to make a lot of squares, uh, spares, squares. Who's winning the invitational? See, I've had a lot of questions for that. It's whoever it's, brings their A game that day. It's, it's tough for me to decide, be just because of the fact that the because the handicap got lowered this year, the field is very even. And then you have some of your titans, your your better players are actually facing each other in the first round. So guys, like I could say easily, uh, Janelle and Jeremy have a great chance of just 
cruising through to the to the the suite or the final eight or whatever it is. The oh, is that why he asked me? He's bowling her first round. Oh, and and he's giving her pins. Yes, that's what I was saying. Well, I didn't understand the question. Okay, so he's giving her pins for the invitational first round. Oh this my week. god, he doesn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have a chance at all now. I mean, yeah. Well, who's winning the invitational? I don't know. It's tough. Uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, there's so many. There's so many people in there. It's it's tough. But uh, I know this guy always brings his A game, and I think that he's gonna bring it. And I think it's just gonna be uh, Artie Van Buren. I'm sorry. I I can't vote against a guy who just knows how to bring it, and he just has another level. Because when he's on, he's just you know, and you know he's when bringing the money's it. Money's on the line. There's nobody better than Artie Van Buren. If there's money up, you do not bet against that man. Ever, I'm sorry, he because he really? always shows up. Always doesn't he matter. He will cut his thumb off if he, if his thumb's bleeding too much. <laughs> you know, he's that kind of guy. I'm gonna take Artie. He's a low seed this year, but I just feel like he's he's that good. That's all right. That's all right. Jack Papau, what's the best ball in the market currently? It depends on what you're looking for. That's I think one thing people like about coming in is I don't just say hey buy this ball. I ask them what they want, what they're looking for, what they don't have, and then we kind of adjust around it. Um, but my favorite ball in the market for myself, if it's on the market, that's tough. I'll say uh, it just came out. There's going to be – there's a few. I can't pick. <laughs> it's too many. Too many good ones, I think. Obsession Tour, Damn Good Verge, Game Breaker 4, Zenith. Zenith is solid. Those are the four good ones that I use a lot. Also, there's going to be a drop coming up soon anyway, right? Well, Radical just had a big drop too, I think. Yeah. Uh, Mitch, yeah. Thank you. Right. New Thursday Night Ritual. But, hey, yeah, Purple Hammer's coming back. Urethane Purple Hammer. Wait yeah, for that, baby. real announcement. Thanks, Mitch. You know, I don't think it was my greatest performance, but we'll, we'll have to dive. <laughs> it's such a big rabbit hole. I think it, it's going to take more than one episode to get into everything. That's right. Lots and lots so. of episodes for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Really appreciate uh, the interaction, the questions. Keep them coming. Don't forget, uh, the post will be up. So go to Facebook uh, uh, and uh, go to the link and vote your favorite player. Um we have to go bowling. It's time for us to go. So uh, like, subscribe, uh, share with your friends. Kyle Carey, are you kidding me, Mitch? He's you right. did not carry He's me. Right. Uh, catch, us, <laughs> catch us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you can't watch the show, don't forget, we are on every major podcast outlet, so you can download us and listen to us in your car or on your uh, phone Workouts. or whatever yeah. while you're uh, lifting weights. or Owen the lawn I mean, in Jacksonville, yeah. Florida. I don't, uh, I don't lift weights, obviously. Um, so... Uh, if you'd like to make suggestions uh, for show topics or ask us to review a ball, um, email uh, us at downlanepod at gmail.com. That is downlanepod at gmail.com. Thank you to Austin Van Buren, our producer, Jack Skacia, proprietor of Town & Country Lanes. Thank you, Anthony, for another fantastic show. It's all right. I think I got to do better. There's always room for improvement. Uh, thank you uh, to my family, Stephanie, Zach, and Ethan. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week. This is Downlane Podcast. The DLP.